Welcome to our Math BMO test walkthrough. If you're preparing for the Maths British Mathematical Olympiad or just curious about challenging math problems, you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll take you through the key concepts and problem solving strategies you need to tackle the BMO with confidence. So whether you're a student or an enthusiast, get ready to enhance your mathematical skills and discover the beauty of problem solving. Question number five. For each integer where n is greater than or equal to one, let fn be the number of lists of different positive integers, starting with one and ending with n, in which each term except the last divides its successor. Prove that for each integer n is greater than or equal to one, there is an integer where n is greater than or equal to 1, such that n divides fn. So f1 equals 1, f2 equals 1, and f6 equals 3. So if we're going to start thinking about this problem, it makes sense to start using a number that's got factors that are easy to understand. So I'm going to start by thinking about powers of 2, like 2 to the k. Now, factors of 2 to the k are powers of 2 up to k within itself, where 2 to the naught is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Now, what we're asked to count is the number of lists of factors where every term divides with 1 after it. So the rules say that I've got to start with 1, but I've also got to finish with 2 to the k with itself, but I can choose or not to choose to have any of the terms in between. So I could have choose to have 2, I could choose not to have 4, I could have some of 1s in the middle, and then I could choose to have 2 to the k minus 1. Now this is easy to count because I've got k minus 1 independent choices. I choose 2 or not, or 4 or not, and so and so. So what does that mean? Well, that means that there's 2 to the k minus 1 different lists, because that's choices of two things, at k minus 1 times. So f2 to the k is seen as 2 to the k minus 1, which is a nice number. Unfortunately, this alone is not going to solve the problem. So we're asked to find a number that was a multiple of n for any n. And unfortunately, if we find that f to 2 to the k is equal to 2 to the k minus 1, that means that this will be a factor, which again is quite limited. So let's think about another number. So we're going to have to try something else in order to get bigger examples with more factors. So let's try with numbers with different prime factors. So we're going to have to try something else in order to get bigger examples with more factors. So if we're trying to think of numbers where there'll be more factors and more going on, it's pretty natural to have the idea of working with numbers with different prime factors. For example, 30, which is 2 times 3 times 5. Now, if we draw a graph which shows how the factors work and how they divide each other, it looks kind of complicated. And if we add another prime factor, like 7, to get 210, the diagram is going to become even more complicated. It turns out to be a better idea to think about the number 2 to the k times 3. So 2 to the k times 3 has some factors that are a bit more complicated compared to those with 2 to the k. And so I've written out all of the factors of the powers of 2, and I've also drawn out the powers of 2 times 3, from the 0 times 3 to 2 to the k times 3. So what does the rule say? Well, the rule says that we need to have 1, and we need to have 2 to the k times 3 in our list. But it's a little bit more complicated to, you know, understand what we have in between. So we're not going to choose some and leave some, but we need to work with a list, where each term divides with the term after it. Now, in situations like this, it's good to break it up into smaller chunks, which is easier to count. So one way we can do this is to ask ourselves what last term that we use in the top row is compared to the bottom. And that way we can compare if the last term in the row is one, two, four, or two to the k. So if the last term in the top row is one, then that means we can use any of the bottom rows here. So we can use 3 or not use 3, 
U6 or not U6, and so on. And so that gives us a term of 2 to the k, as there are k different choices of what we can use or not use. However, if the last term that we use is 2, then we have fewer choices. Because if we use 2, then we can either use or not use 6 or 12, but we don't have the choice of 3 anymore. So that gives us 2 to the k minus 1. However, if the last term we use is 4 again, now we have a choice of 2, which is starting from 12 onwards. So we've got k minus 1 that we can choose and not choose, and so that can give us 2k minus 1. And then lastly, if we continue in this way and we go for the last term, which is 2 to the power of k, then we know there are k minus 1 terms in the top row that we can use, but none from the bottom row. So this gives us a whole bunch of terms of 2 to the k minus 1. And what can we see here? Well, we can see that there's a factor of these k minus 1 terms where 1 corresponds to each last row of the top row from 2 to the 1 to 2 to the k. So what can we do? Well, we can write this by saying that f of 2k times 3 is equal to k plus 2 times 2 to the k minus 1. So this is really good news for us because we wanted something that had n as a factor. And this bracket of k plus 2 means that we can choose k in order to get any factor that we want. So if we want the factor of n, we can simply take f of 2 to the power of n minus 2 times 3, and that will be n 2 to the power of n minus 3. And this will mark provided that n is big enough. However, if we check this really quickly, and this will work provided that n is big enough, but if we check this quickly, we realize that the only cases where this doesn't work are the cases that we've already done in the earlier examples of 2 to the k with itself. So this example is everything that we need. I hope that question was clear. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to go ahead and get the solutions for the next questions, please click the link on the screen now. And don't forget to like this video and leave a comment with your thoughts and ideas. Until next time, keep solving and keep thriving.